now before we jump right into this, let me just uh, elaborate on why I say an equation, why I stress that. Let's think about this for a second. If all we're told is that the vertex is at negative 2, positive 5, and that is the only detail that we are given about this absolute value function, we could have uh, an absolute value function that looks like this. We could have one that opens downward and is super narrow. We could have one that opens downward and is really wide. Okay, there's like infinite number of possibilities when all we're told is that the vertex has to be at negative 2, 5. So if that's all we're told, I'm going to keep it simple. Okay, I'm not going to go with all the extra details. I'm just going to put the minimum amount into this problem as possible. So remember where the x coordinate of the vertex comes from. Okay, the x equals negative 2. If we add 2, if we, if we uh, set that equal to 0, if we make that equal to 0, um, x plus 2 is what was inside of our absolute value. And remember the y coordinate is just the number there on the end. Okay? So this is an equation. This is the simplest one, most straightforward one. We could stick a negative in front of it. Okay? Uh, we could put a coefficient in front of it. There are several things that we could do, but that's really all we have to do with just that condition. Let's look at one that gives us a little bit more detail, okay? Uh, now, this one says what is the equation, because really there's only one possibility here. That if the vertex is at the point 3, negative 4, and we are told that this function goes through the point 1, negative 8. Now, you don't necessarily have to have a visual representation here, but I think that it does help if we're trying to figure out how to write this equation. Um, so I'm going to plot these two points, 3, negative 4, that is my vertex, and 1, negative 8 is another point that this is going to go through. So based on what I know about absolute value, this function is going to look somewhat like this, right? We know that it's opening downward if it goes through the point 1, negative 8. And that's the vertex at 3, negative 4. <clears throat> so, I'm going to go ahead and plug in what I know based on the vertex. I'm going to put that in my equation. x minus 3 is inside the absolute value because the x coordinate is at positive 3. Minus 4 is outside the absolute value because the y coordinate of the vertex is negative 4. But between the point 3, negative 4 and 1, negative 8, is there a slope of 1? No. What's the slope? 2. It is 2. Okay? It is 2. The slope is 2. You can count it. You can calculate it. Whatever method you want to use. But the slope is 2. And not only is the slope 2, there's a negative in front of it because it is facing downward. Uh, if you wanted to calculate it, then you could do, um, just go to your slope formula, x1, y1, x2, y2, and you could do uh, negative 8 minus negative 4 over 3 minus 1, negative 4 over 2. <coughs> That's where the negative 2 comes from. Now, huh? How did I do it for, uh, because I went down a little bit because I didn't have 2. Okay. Now, just because I got negative 2 here when I calculated it does not guarantee that there should be a negative 2 in front of the absolute value. The reason why it's negative 2 in front of the absolute value is because I know that this absolute value function is opening downward. That's why there's a negative there. Okay? Um, but it's not necessarily because of this. If, um, if we had been given the point 5, negative 8, okay, if we had been given the point 5, negative 8, then we would have gotten positive 2 as the slope, um, but it would still be negative 2 in front of that absolute value because it's still in front of the place of the positive value function. Okay? Uh, okay, next one. Is this it finished? Uh, let's get into that one tomorrow. Okay? Let's just leave it in.